Hello and welcome back to Hackathon Entertainment TV. I'm Mr. Hackathon. I bring you the story behind every hack. Occasionally on this channel, what we do are tutorials to show you how to build great hackathon products or projects without coding. In this video, I am going to show you how to make a Chrome extension that writes data to your Airtable database. To do this, we're going to use a tool called Builder. So let me open that. Builder is what we're going to use to create our Chrome extension. It's a visual development platform that allows you to get create websites, web apps, SaaS products, and Chrome extensions. It's probably one of the only, it's definitely the best no-code platform, platform to be able to build Chrome extensions. And we're going to use Airtable to store our data. Airtable is very similar to, what is it similar to? To Google Sheets, similar to Excel. And if we jump back, if I can jump back. So we'll look at Airtable in a, in a short while. I have to log out to show you the homepage for Airtable to show you what the Chrome extension is like. So I have this Chrome extension installed. It's very simple, relatively ugly Chrome extension. But the point of this video is the functionality. So I can just enter my name or let's enter Mr. Let me refresh this, open a new tab. It shouldn't be doing that. So we're going to open it again and I'm going to type Mr. Hackathon. So what we have is this kind of form in the version of the Chrome extension. Really and truly you want to make add more functionality to this Chrome extension and to actually make it powerful as an extension of Google Chrome. But that's for another video. In this video, you can see our input box. We create some text. We click submit. It has this kind of sending. Once it's sent to Airtable, what it resets the values. And if we go to Airtable, you can see Mr. Hackathon just appeared. One thing I didn't mention that this is being stitched together by Zapier. Zapier or Zapier is a tool to allow you to connect applications. Here I'm connecting Builder or my request from my Builder Chrome extension to Airtable. And Zapier is the glue for that. I send it to a webhook. It catches that webhook and creates a record in Airtable. So we're going to head over to Builder and begin building this. I'm, how do I want to do this? Okay. I want to open a new project in my studio. Let's just create some kind of notes or journal. Let's create a journal. going to create a Chrome extension that can save notes for us. So we're going to create project. What we also have to do is open Airtable and create a new database in Airtable. So builder is loading, Airtable is loading. So what I'm going to do in Airtable is you have these bases which hold your data. I want to create a new base. I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to name my base journal. I'm also going to remove some of these fields. I'm going to rename this top field title. I am going to rename this field description. And I'm going to change it to maybe rich text if possible. No, I don't see rich text, but I do see long text. So 
I'm going to change it to long text and I'm going to be able to create a journal entry, give the journal entry a title and actually write my journal entry in the description. If we go back, what we're going to do is start with a blank page in Builder. And what we want to do next is I'm actually, the way I do this, I go to the page body, I add a new child element, and the first thing I do is add a div. Then I go back, I create a child or the div, and I create heading. Let's give it a nice title. We're just gonna call it journal extension. And what we also want to do is add something that allows the user to input. So we're going to add a text input, but we also want something for the description. So we're going to also add a multi line. You have a text area, multi-line, rich text editor. I think we just want this text er editor or text area, multi-line. So we're going to add that. And I think the way, there's different ways you can format this. This is really, really ugly. But the way I am going to do it, I'm going to create additional divs. So I'm going to create a div here place that like that and let's just copy or duplicate this I'm going to remove this okay now it doesn't look the best but we have this on two separate lines and what we also need is a submit button so I'm going to add a button And I'm going to change the button type to submit. And I also want to change the display text to submit. So we have the basic look and feel of our extension. What we need to do next is to add some flows in Builder to be able to actually send this to Zapier, which is gluing together Airtable and Builder. What we want to do this is on submit, we want some things to happen. We want it to send it to a webhook. So if I go to flows, I think I want to create a new flow and just double checking some of the flows that I created here. Send to Zepia, Zepia to sex. So I'm going to create one that's called send to Zepia. And I think the first thing I want to do is save the input as a variable on the page. And let me just check how I did it here. <clears throat> so the first thing I did was I changed the submit to send in. Then I set the variable and I, I created some variable names. And I set variables. Next, what I did is I had an API endpoint and I had a timer for the success. So that's what we want to do. First, we want to change the value of the submit button. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do set element, set value, element set value. We are going to select our submit and we're going to say send in. Let's check in. We want to set variables. So I actually turned these into a variable and I sent the variables directly to Zapier and, and Airtable. So let's go set. Let's 
set variable. So I want to set a variable on the current page and the variable name I want to net to set for me it has to be the same name as this. So it's going to be title and description. There's two variables I want to set. So one is title and the value is going to be from the element value and the element that it's going to be from is going to be, let's see, the, uh, the first text input. Then I actually want to create another one of these and I want to set a variable called description. I'm going to take that from the current page and So now I set two variables. So now when the user types, let's see, when the user clicks submit, variables are set. And right now it doesn't do anything. It just sets the variable. But what I want to do next, just to double check, is send it to send it to Zapier. So what we're gonna do to send it to Zapier is get API endpoint get and set ver set in variable. So we need a URL to send it to. To get a URL, I have my URL here somewhere. I think I need to create a new Okay. So I'm going to create a zap I'm going to create a custom app. And really all I want is my URL for now. But we will just go through this process. So I want webhook. Actually see webhook here. And I'm using the seven day free trial. Um, but webhook is, using a webhook is a premium feature. So just to double check, webhook. And I want to catch. I'm going to click continue. And here it has my URL. And I go back. My laptop's about to die. And so I have some headers. So the first header I'm going to put, and I just double check here. The first header I want to put is content type, and then the next one's application slash JSON. So we have content type and application JSON. It's a post method. So when this again, the, the scope of this is not to talk about the details of of making requests, what is a method, get post. What we want is a key value pair now. So when we send this inf information, we need a title to give it and we need a value. So we, in our variables, we say our variable as the same thing we have it in our table. So, the key is title. The value is a variable. I get from variable from the current page variable and I select it and it should have my title here. And I'm going to add another key value pair. And this time I am going to call it description. And I'm going to find it again from variable and description. I think that's it. I'm just going to double check. So, yep, yeah, that's it. 
And then we're going to start a flow timer. What we want to do quickly before we start the flow timer is create a success kind of uh, feature. And this success feature, what it does, it, it says that this has been sent, it clears the page variables, and it resets the input box. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to come back to our API endpoint action. So to do that, we have to create a new flow. And I'm going to say Zapier success. I'm going to add an action. The first action that I added was element set value. And I want to set the submit button to sent. I'm just having a quick look at this. Okay. And then the next thing I want to do is clear page variables and then set the value. So I want to clear the page variables of this current page. Oh no, it's, it's going to do it for the current page automatically. And then I want to set the value of this element and the element I want to set the value of is actually now I actually got two so I want to reset not just the text input but the text area so it resets both of these boxes and that should be it so now when we go back to our center Zapier we go here when we go Just to double check. Flow timer. Okay. We are going to add the flow timer to this. and it will execute the flow on a particular interval. And I want to execute this success flow. Let's, this time, let's say seconds, but the interval we want to add is two seconds. And that is it. Now, what I actually want to do is preview this. I'm going to say this, and I, I hate, for whatever reason, I hate when it's just called a default new page. So I'm actually going to change the name of this page to home. I go to home. Now you need to set the root page. So even in preview, you need to set the root page so I can actually preview this. <clears throat> So right now, if I enter these values, let's say, um, hello world, and I say this is my first entry, and I click submit, it won't add it to my Airtable database. That's because I haven't connected it yet. And this is what Zapier is waiting to do. It's waiting to connect the two. So if I click continue, it's asking me to set up the trigger, but it should ask me to test the trigger. It said, it's asking me to send a request. So what I'm actually going to do in my preview um, screen, I'm going to send a request. Oh, I missed a stage. So the stage I actually missed is you have to, on the submit click, you have to add an event and the new event is on the click. You want to say send to Zapier. So now if I refresh this, and I say, hello world. And I say, this is my first entry. And I click submit. You see, it says send in. 
it says sent after two seconds, it resets the values. But if we go back to Zapier and test trigger, as you can see, it picked up the request that was sent to the webhook. So now we're going to go to continue. What we want to do here is find Airtable. The great thing with this and how Builder is, is currently set up is that if you're using Zapier, you technically can connect it to almost anything. Now, that's an exaggeration because uh, Zapier doesn't have access to anything, but the, the premise stands that from Builder or from your Chrome extension, you can send a request to Zapier, which can go to a range of different apps, which increases the possibilities for and the use cases for your extension. What we're going to do is choose action event. We're going to create a record. And I need to connect it to my account. I already set up my account, so. But you would have to authorize Zapier to have access to your account. That's already done for me. I have to find my base and I called my base journal. And you have to tell it what table you want to create to, and it's just called table one. Now you have to map the data. So remember, we just called it the same thing. We called it title. And we called our description, description. Now you want to continue. You want to test and continue. So if this works, it should say successful. It said the test was successful. And if we go to our Airtable database, as you can see, it wrote it to our database. So we're just gonna remove some of these. So what we want to do now, if I go back to Zapier, we want to turn on this app. And now this app's turned on. So anytime, even from the preview or the previewer, if I go to uh, hello, no code, if I, Oh, that's interesting. So there is a slight error with my Chrome extension, but we're going to just ignore that for now. We're going to say, hello, no code. I, all I did is refresh because there is a, a technical error in my flow that I've created, but it is okay. Then we're going to say, this is my second entry and when I click submit it says sent and if I go here you can see hello no code this is my second entry so we know it works what we want to do is to now export this as an extension so to do that we are going to open the page properties we're going to scroll down, go to export Chrome extension. We're going to call this journal EXT. We're going to name a short name journal EXT. We're just going to say journal extension, home page URL. And again, I, I keep forgetting a very important step. Without this important step, you will not be able to publish your Chrome extension. I'm going to go back. I'm going to publish. I'm going to publish from de development to production. I'm going to add a subdomain. I'm going to say uh, journal extension. Verify if this subdomain is available. It's available. So we're going to click continue and we're going to click publish. You need to publish this URL. You need to open and check if it's able to be accessed. So now this is in production. So if we go back to export Chrome extension and finish this, the production main page URL is the one you have to use. So we're just gonna paste that. We are going to go to our media library. 
and I am going to just upload the file. I'm going to upload this PNG. I'm going to change this to, let's change it to top banner. I usually do it as a, uh, I usually do it as a right banner. Or let's change it to left. This was something different. We want to export this as a Chrome extension. It's going to export this as a zip file. We want to open the zip file. So now it's open. We're going to go back. And we want to go to our extensions. And what we actually want to do is to load unpacked. We want to find it. So we find it. I uploaded it somewhere. So it's somewhere here. Okay. General EXT. We're going to pin it to our taskbar and then let me open a new Twitter. And what I am going to do now is I am going to test out the Chrome extension. So we opened it, it's on the left bar. We can see journal extension, just like in our previewer. I'm going to say, we're finished. This extension has been easy. We're going to click Submit. You see the sending, two seconds, it changes this to sent, it resets the values, and now we want to check in our Airtable, and you can see. So that is, in under 30 minutes, how you create a Chrome extension that writes data to Airtable. As I said, the possibilities are endless because we actually use Zapier to do this. And with Zapier, you can do a lot more than just write data to Airtable. I think in another, in another video, I'm going to show you how to also read this data back in your Chrome extension. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more no-code tutorials, content. If you have any questions, feel free to DM me or feel free to write in the comment section, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Happy hacking.